All right, welcome back to class. Chris Wedding here again. As a faculty member here at Duke University, I'd like to welcome you to the Nicholas School of the Environment. I'm standing in front of the school's Environment Hall, a 70,000 square foot state-of-the-art facility completed in 2014. This is a building that exceeds the U.S. Green Building Council's third-party certification for green buildings at the platinum level. That is the highest level for this green building standard. In this video, my goal is to make renewable energy and green building entrepreneurship more real and tangible. So let's start big picture. The Nicholas School of the Environment is one of the world's leading schools of environmental management. With 150 faculty, 180 PhD students, 360 professional students, 280 undergraduate students, and over 3,000 living alumni, a budget of $45 million per year, and 300 research projects per year as well. So faculty and students like ours are great at identifying environmental and public health problems and the solutions. And that's a great place to start. Naming problems is a great way to begin a list of possible businesses worth launching. It's often said that businesses are created to solve problems, and I believe that's the case. However, environmental expertise is not enough. There are other essential elements to starting new companies. These include finance, marketing, policy, business strategy, engineering, and law, among many other specialties. As I like to say, we need to become multilingual. And while I love learning foreign languages, in this case, I'm talking about environmental managers becoming more fluent in finance, or marketing professionals becoming more savvy in climate change science. To that end, we have partnerships with other schools on campus, and we encourage students to get out into the real world talking to stakeholders, customers, and competitors, those who stand to win and those who stand to lose. It's for the same reason that I'm also a faculty member at UNC Chapel Hill's Business School and at the Institute for Defense and Business, which provides executive education to U.S. military leaders. Most importantly, it's the reason that I founded and now serve as managing partner for Iron Oak Energy, a financial advisory firm focused on renewable energy. Okay. Now let's get more granular and take a look at some of the renewable energy and green building features of Environment Hall. We're now standing in what looks like a normal hallway, albeit one that is showered in natural daylight with refreshing views to the outdoors. However, the space between the exterior wall and the interior rooms also serves as a thermal corridor that provides natural insulation for offices and laboratories. And some windows in the building will open automatically to allow natural ventilation and lower energy use when outdoor temperature and humidity are conducive. This highlights an important point in the world of renewable energy and green building. Sometimes you see the innovation and sometimes you don't. And while the innovation that you do see, such as solar panels, can provide bigger marketing and branding benefits, it is often the ones you do not see, such as energy efficient insulation hidden behind walls, that provide a higher ROI or return on investment. Okay, now let's focus on these windows again. This daylighting helps to reduce energy used for lighting while also enhancing building users' enjoyment of the space. That may seem like a very soft or intangible benefit, but research shows that students in green buildings often score better on tests, and workers are often more productive with fewer sick days in buildings like this. Now we're talking real benefits better learning environments, and greater employee output and satisfaction. From up here, we can see other elements of green building before we focus on the renewable energy behind us. As designers, builders, and innovators, the goal is to imagine a different future. Down below in the courtyard, there are the beginnings of an edible orchard. Planted with fig, plum, and pear trees that are selected based on the local soil and climate and require less water. Flash forward a few years and we can picture students and faculty grabbing a piece of fresh fruit to enjoy while they create the newest startup focused on perhaps renewable energy. While solar panels get most of the attention, this building wasn't just designed like a normal building and then given some solar panels. When that does happen among less experienced owners, designers, and investors, the quirky industry reference is this. It's like putting lipstick on a gorilla. Yeah, I know. Think about that one for a second. Instead, the building was first optimized for energy efficiency, from the latest in lighting and heating and cooling innovation to vertical frets and horizontal fins on the outside of the building, which minimize heat gain from the strong North Carolina sun. And after energy demand was reduced by 40 to 70%, solar panels for electricity and solar hot water heating systems were installed. 
Now let's focus on these solar panels you see behind me. In all, this system has 50 kilowatts of solar generating capacity. That's enough to power roughly 10% of the building's energy needs. It's the same simple technology that's been around for over 50 years, with warranties of at least 25 years on the panels that now accounts for about 40% of new annual electrical generating capacity added to the U.S. power grid. While this installation is just 50 kilowatts, there are hundreds of installations in this state that are about 6,000 kilowatts, which make it a top two solar state in the U.S. Importantly, the impetus behind this roughly $5 billion invested in solar in the state since 2010 is the result of a handful of entrepreneurs who saw strong policy, affordable land, energy expertise, and then organized the capital to build businesses that create green jobs, solve environmental problems like air pollution, increase taxes for local towns in need of economic development, and ultimately generate wealth for the team and their families.